much. And uh, let me invite our first speaker, uh, Christina or Krysia Olyf, uh, the former uh, chairperson of the Polish Educational Society with its premises in the Polish uh, Center in Hammersmith, Post. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me. I hope the technology will not cause too many problems. So we shall start with the, uh, my presentation, which will be Polish related places and people. And uh, do I have the second? Can you see the second um, um, cadre of the presentation? I'll, I'll, I'll share it, shall I? Yes, please. Right. So it appears that I cannot do it, so you, I'll have to rely on you. Okay. So the, the next, right, um, the first contact, uh, it's in year 1015, Knut the Great, or King Knut of Denmark, Norway, became the King of England, famous as the wise king who demonstrated the limits of his kingship. The reason I mention King Knut is that it was his Polish mother, Genhilda, the daughter of Polish King Mieszko I of Mieszko I, who secured her son his victorious army from the Polish King Bolesław Chrobry. And yes. Um, I learned about this, his arrival in England during my visit to a Polish Saturday school in Gravesend. An English caretaker, a keen historian who worked in the building where the school shared premises with Tamil language school, told me this history. It appears that the landing place of Knut and his Polish soldiers was just a mile or so away from the school. Given this incredible historical fact, I tried in vain to persuade the parents' committee to name the school after King Knut the Great but they prefer John Paul II, and alas, the Pope won. Uh, the next, the, the first wave of Polish immigration was political in nature. Uh, this is uh, apparently a, a picture of uh, Bolesław Chrobry, who, who was um, providing the, the army. The first wave of political immigration was uh, in, in um, 1834. Can we move on, so please? Yes. Yes, so just in Excel. Um, it occurred in Portsmouth in 1834 when 212 soldiers were exiled by the Tsar, Russian Tsar for participating in the November uprising in 1831 during the partition of Poland. They were on their way to America when their progress was interrupted by stormy weather. They had to seek refuge in Portsmouth. Next clip. A mutiny broke out on the ship and the soldiers no longer wanted to go to America. The citizens, next, yes, the citizens of Portsmouth and the mayor of Portsmouth welcomed them to stay in the town and they remained in, in England. The British government also supported them financially. Um, um, this event is commemorated by the uh, monument at Kingston Cemetery in Portsmouth to mark this and give thanks to the citizens of Portsmouth for their help and welcome. Many of the soldiers are buried there, whilst others who left for London are buried at Highgate Cemetery on White 
eagle hair. The next clip, please. Mm. Right. Um, then the next phase will be the next clip is post-war settlers. The second wave of Polish immigration occurred at the end of the Second World War in 1945. Sorry, Chris. During... Sorry, Chris, to interrupt. Could, could everyone mute, please? During, during World War, uh, Second World War, the, the Polish government in exile settled in London. Many of the soldiers of the uh, Polish army, then under the command of General uh, Anders, settled in the UK as well. Hoping to eventually return to their homeland, they took great care in organizing a system of education for their children to keep the language, history and traditions alive. The Polish Educational Society, which initially came to being in 1905 during the ongoing partition of Poland, became active again in 1953. Many Polish organizations were very supportive in helping to establish Polish Saturday schools. The Polish Combatants Association, the local parishes, and other organizations actively helped. General Anders was very keen on education for all young Poles, especially children. His daughter Anna attended the Maria Konopnicka Polish Saturday School in the London borough of Wilsden. <coughs> A six-year-old Anna, currently Poland ambassador to Italy, at first did not like the school and would often cry. Her doting father, the general, usually tried to watch the class through the window above the classroom door by standing on a chair outside. Concerned for the general's safety, his daughter's teacher, Danka Pnieska, MBE, the first teacher employed at Wilson School, asked him to come down and take uh, up a leading position in a school parade to mark the Independence Day of the 11th of November instead. The general agreed and did this with great enthusiasm. Um, several schools celebrated their 70th anniversary in recent years. Among them, the earlier mentioned school in Wilsden, but also the Mikołaj Ray School in Chiswick, the Maria Skłodowska Kiri School in Patney, the, T the Tadeusz Kościuszko School in Ealing, which was awarded by Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service two years ago. Can we have this clip, please? Right. The, the award was uh, presented by the son of Franciszek Kornicki, the Battle of Britain pilot Richard Kornicki, uh, Kornicki uh, Queen's Council Lieutenant. Several Polish schools established themselves in those early days in Bristol, Manchester, Glasgow and Edinburgh. Many other schools would follow. The Queen Award for Voluntary Service was also received by one of the newest Polish schools in Warsaw. Before the outbreak of, outbreak of the COVID-19 epidemic, there were over 130 Polish Educational Society schools in Great Britain. Regrettably, some of them did not survive due to the constraints of the online teaching, but we hope the new school year will see their return. The next clip, <coughs> please, yes. The, uh, yes, this one. The Federation of Poles and Polish Women's Union. Many, very many important organizations and charities formed in those early days. Zjednoczenie Polskie, the Federation of Poles, is the umbrella organization for many old and some new organizations. Zjednoczenie Polek, Polish Women's Union organization, which took care of widowed 
and single mothers in the refuge in Erskort was for many years helping countless families in need in Great Britain and abroad and is still working from the offices in POSC. Among other notable volunteers was Karolina Kaczorowska, widow of last Polish president in exile, Richard Kaczorowski. <coughs> next, please, next. Next, please. yes. Um, the third Pol Polish wave of immigration was due to the imposition of martial law in Poland in December 1981. Many Poles were caught abroad, uh, afraid to return to Poland and, in, and needed help. Those in Poland needed, to help, needed help as well, especially with medicines and hospital equipment. Dr. Bożena Laskiewicz founded the charity Medical Aid for Poland and assisted with a fantastic group of volunteers. Over the years dispatched nearly 400 lorries loaded with 20 tons each of medicines and medical equipment. This year Medical Aid for Poland celebrates their 40th <coughs> anniversary. Next clip please. Marshal, yes, um, the, to mark the 30th anniversary of Solidarność, Polish Solidarity, the Polish Cultural and Social Club organized an exhibition in the Post Gallery, which His Royal Highness, Highness Prince Charles and Duchess of Cornwall came to see before their subsequent visit to Poland. As then the head teacher of the Mikołaj Ray um, School in Chiswick, I was asked to organize a Polish lesson for His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Connor. A great honor, but a great daunting task. The Mikołaj uh, Ray School in Chiswick very often took part in a variety of events and celebrations in POSC and children were always very eager to participate. The problem I faced, however, was that the strictest secrecy was to be maintained with the participating children could not be made aware of who it was that they were preparing to entertain. Together with the history teacher Eva Durko, we thought it important to remind the, the, the prince of some shared Polish connections, as the prince had made mention on an early occasion of his uh, knowledge about King Knut, so we decided to in include him in our lesson. Um, we also thought that it would serve a gentle reminder that long before officially joining the European Union in 2004, Poland had always been at the heart of Europe. In an email from the office of uh, Prince Charles came a request uh, to include the Battle of Britain in our lesson. This was great help. We invited one of the Polish pilots, Mr. Krakowian, to, to meet the children at school and although he himself was too young by one year to fly in the Battle of Britain, he had known many of the participating pilots and trained with them and served in the RAF for many years, so was more than qualified to tell a few stories about the battle. You, you need a new next clip. Yes, this is the Mr. Mr. Krakowian. Our oldest pupils visited the Polish War Memorial in Norfolk. By the way, it is situated in Western Avenue Ryslip, where every rush hour is a traffic jam. Because of this, the memorial is mentioned on the radio at least twice a day. Children took also pictures of the Battle of Britain Monument in London, as well as the Imperial War Museum and created a huge collage including all the information and pictures they were able to, to gather among, amongst which was a pilot's flight logbook. Prince Charles was particularly happy 
Can we have next clip? I was particularly happy that the Battle of Britain monument, designed by one of the Prince's Trust youngsters, was included in our college collage. The Polish lesson in three parts now. Great. Um, the the second part. The, the, um, yes. The this is the picture. Next 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 clip. Next clip. Down. Yes. The second uh, part of the lesson was decided, uh, dedicated to the Polish connections with other European thrones. The Polish ambassador, which is the, uh, which is, yes, um, the Polish ambassador, Barbara Togerecinska, was very interested to hear about King Knut the Great, who was the son of the Polish princess and grandson of the Polish King Mieszko I and who in 1016 became the King of England, Denmark and Norway, often referred to together as the North Sea Empire during his rule. The Queen Elizabeth of Austria, next clip, yes, a wife of Casimir IV of Poland and Grand, Grand Duchess of Lithuania had 13 children. Four of her sons became kings of Poland, Lithuania, the Czechs, and Hungary. Four of her daughters married high nobility and rulers of Europe. It might be interesting to mention that one of the daughters, Sofia, became the mother of Albrecht Hohenzollern, the master of the Teutonic Knights. It seems that while men were focusing primarily on the ruling and fighting women network. The final part of the lesson was a short production of the legend of crack and bubble dragon performed by the group of eight-year-olds, eight-year-old pupils. A leading girl became unexpectedly ill and there was a frantic search for the replacement. The girl who had, the first, to who had at first agreed to take her place suddenly got stage fright and burst into tears. The prin Prince Charles immediately noticed her uh, tear-reddened eyes and asked her why she had been crying. Like a consummate actress, she answered in a strong, commanding voice. I cried because I did not want to be queen. Prince Charles appeared amused by the response and subsequently stayed with us a few minutes longer. The next will be, please. Poland joins the EU, which we have flags and a map of Poland. Uh, Next one, yes, Poland joining. And initially expected to be no larger than 12,000 newcomers. Current estimates suggest that around 800,000 came after Poland joined the European Union in 2004. And Poles were free to work and settle in other European countries. Many young people and families came to work here. Um, the next one. Please, yes. Saturday, Saturday schools grew uh, and quickly many new schools had opened. Not all school age children settled, uh, attended Saturday schools, but spoke, spoke excellent Polish and wanted to sit the Polish um, language GCSE and A level exams. The Polish Educational Society decided to open an examination center to enable those who were not able to take exams in their day schools to take them at our center. Uh, some, some time ago, uh, during an oral GCSE exam, I asked a boy if he knew of any famous Polish people. He immediately answered Bonnik. When I asked him who Bonnik was, the astonished boy told me that he was a footballer that had recently scored a vital goal in an important match. 
to help him gain the necessary points in the exam, I asked him if he perhaps knew one who lived in the Vatican. He immediately responded, Wojtyla was always a goalkeeper. Can we have a next? Right. Uh, talking with Joanna about the presentation, uh, she mentioned that it seems not enough women are mentioned yet. They always play an important role in keeping the family's traditions and our language alive throughout this decade of partition of Poland and in families, families living abroad. Uh, next, please. Uh, to celebrate <clears throat> the 100th anniversary of Polish independence, the Polish Education Society organized a competition portrait of a mother as a thank you to all mothers for keeping our language alive. And the next stage, next one, Daughters of Poland. Many women, uh, um, no, I think we have a wrong clip, but never mind. Uh, many women, nurses, wounded soldiers, carried messages in dangerous, in dangerous circumstances. Even our most honored scientist and twice Nobel Prize winner Maria Skłodowska Curie ingeniously helped the wounded by constructing a portable X ray machine, which was used to speed up the diagnosis of the injured in the First World War. This, it, and it was named affectionately Letter Kiri. Uh, this is the uh, next picture, please. Yeah, this is where we have uh, Maria herself in one of these Letter Kiri vehicles. Many women fought in the World War Two. Yeah, next picture. Yes. Jadwiga Piłsudska, Lieutenant Anna Leska, uh, and Barbara Vaitulanis, uh, who flew with the RAF at um, Transport Auxiliary. Next one, please. Right. The, the Polish underground movement. Uh, the, Arch the Archival in Institu uh, Institute at 11 Leopold Road in Ealing keeps a vast collection of records from World War II, many documenting the significant involvement of women. And the final clip will be the witnesses of history. We are very lucky to still have among us Mrs. Wanda Kostya, who as a 16-year-old nurse was shot and wounded in the Warsaw Uprising in, and Mrs. Marzena Schaeber, who then served as a courier. Both women, now, in, in over, now over 90 years old, often visited many Polish schools and taught children about their time during the war. Wanda Kostya taught at the uh, Skłodowska Kiri School for many years. Another teacher, Danka Pnieska, who, uh, MBE, who uh, was sent to Siberia as a 15-year-old girl, later spent almost 40 years teaching at both the Konopnicka School in Wilsden and Mikołaj Ray School in Chiswick. All three women are in their 90s and still going strong. Thank you. Thank you.